Before you arrive, start, so I would just like to ask you all to make sure that your cameras are turned off and that you're muted, that this service is an opportunity for you to simply just watch and take in the experience that we're providing for you today so that we may stay in community here um, during this time. So it's my honor and my privilege to introduce to you, many of you know this wonderful young man and who's one of our co-music directors at the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles. If you're joining us here in Los Angeles, you may know of Yaron. He's a wonderful musician who also works for the Disney Company. He's traveled the world, done lots of fun things musically. And for those of you that are watching us on Facebook Live, either live or at a later date, I welcome you into an experience of the spiritual community for the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles online. Before we go any further, I invite you to just be patient with us today. This is the first time we've ever done a service of this nature. We've done everything we can to provide you the highest quality possible. But as one of my dear friends said to me the other night, as I was imbibing on Mother Nature's elixirs to remember perfection is not as what is required, continuity and being together is. So that's what we're here to provide you today. So I hand it over to Yaron, who will share a song for us that I hope will continue to inspire us and empower us. Ladies and gentlemen, Yaron Spiewak. Just shower the people. 
Thank you so very much. Let's all give your own a round of applause from whatever location you're in, knowing that the applause that we're giving back to him is indeed showering him with love and deep appreciation. So good morning, everyone. Let's all just take a deep breath in together. And exhale. Let's do another one. giving ourselves the opportunity to reconnect to the breath of life. We're a spiritual community that has come together for over 30 years now here in the city of Los Angeles, providing opportunities for multitudes of people to find their personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening. That's the vision statement for our beloved community. I'm Reverend Dr. Keith Cox, and my title is the spiritual leader of this organization. And it's my honor and my privilege and my glory, really, to be able to share together with you during this time. And as a result of that, be able to move through these changes together for us and um, step into a place of growth and expansion and using the philosophy and the faith and the way of life that we use here at the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles in a way that um, helps provide us opportunity to be empowered on this journey as we continue down this um, experience known as the journey of life. And so there's gonna be some moments like you just heard me when I paused to, um, take a little moment to work on the technological aspect of this. I'm trying to get your own off the screen and me on the screen. So um, um, I'm assuming you guys can see me and if you can, then just please um, give me a thumbs up for those of you that have your cameras on, even though we asked you to have them off. Um, so that would be greatly appreciated. So every Sunday we come together to let me see if I can make this happen. There we go. We come together to be in community. And today is no different in as much as the aspect of being in community looks greatly different than it 
normally does. And so today we're going to do our best to provide you with a service that is reflective of our traditional Sunday service, one that gives us the opportunity to see each other's names on the screen and you can message to Rob in the office if you're on Facebook Live and he'll be happy to chat with you there if at all possible. We're going to do our best to not chat through this particular format, Zoom, because it'll require somebody to monitor that. And right now my goal is to stay as focused as possible to provide us with this service. Here at the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles, we practice metaphysics. We practice primarily the teachings of Dr. Ernest Holmes through the science of mind. That philosophy and faith and way of life is basically founded in that there's only one activity that ever takes place. It's the activity of the divine or source or light or love. Matters not really what you call it, but it matters that you call it often. We're all each imbued with it through and use it through our thoughts and our beliefs and our actions and our reactions and our interactions with the very thing itself, life itself. And so one of the things that we know in this philosophy and faith and way of life is that we are imbued with the qualities of the divine as given to us by late 19th century metaphysicians. And they are this, peace, power, beauty, joy, light, life, love, and wisdom. And so I invite you to take a moment right now and to feel within you these qualities. Once again, they're peace, power, beauty, joy, light, life, love and wisdom. This year we have focused on peace as the quality within us for our morning ritual we open our service. We're going to do that this morning but do it a little differently. Knowing that they're all equal, peace, power, beauty, joy, light, life, love, and wisdom. I'm going to start today with lighting the candle reading a prayer that we used on our recent World AIDS Day service back in December. And it speaks of love. And then we're going to sing a song together The Iran will guide us through called Let There Be Peace on Earth. For many years in our philosophy and our faith, this is a song that was sung at the end of every service. And so it has great meaning because we believe in our philosophy that each and every word that's ever been placed upon the law of creation multiplies and grows every time that it has been sung or stated or used. And that the law knows no different, it doesn't know time. And so it resp responds to that vibrational frequency and brings it out into the field of experience or effect in the world today. So when we sing that song in a minute, I'm going to invite you, if you feel comfortable, as opposed to singing, let there be peace on earth, and please feel free to sing that if you like, but to say, let there be love on earth. The love that we're speaking of when I light the candle today certainly is the human emotional love that we have but it's more in line with the agape love, the love of the divine that exists within you within, and within me. Dr. Ernest Holmes in the books of The Science of Mind defines love as the self-givingness of spirit, whose desire is to create more of itself out of itself. And the only way it can do that is through you and through me. And we do that by not only embodying that which is within us, but by consciously choosing to know it, to be it, to express it, and then also to receive it. So as I light this candle, I invite you to do the same in your home if you have one present, but if not to do so during this time that we're experiencing on life right, in life right now. I will share this prayer later on our website and send it out to each of you called the World AIDS Day Prayer. We certainly know that AIDS has been a time of crisis as this is. And so as you close your eyes, please hear this prayer. As we go forth, may we be empowered by the spirit of hope, of healing, whose name is God, the divine source, and whose other name is love. May the blessings of love be upon us, 
and within us always. May love's truth be upon our vision of healing. May love's wisdom dwell within our hearts. May love's persistent inspire our lips. May love's gentleness give comfort to our bodies. May love's gratitude accompany our sleep. May love's healing be a balm for our brokenness. May love's serenity give peace to our weary souls. May love's confidence energize our minds. Amen. And so it is. And so as Yaron begins to sing this song, I have put up on the screen the lyrics, and we will let Yaron begin. So let's take a moment and close our eyes and be reflective. Remembering in this philosophy and faith that we know that our words have power. That the affirmation of life itself brings back into our experience more of the thing it is, which is indeed life. And so what I affirm for each one of us today is that we embrace evolution as it unfolds. That today is the day that we choose to live in faith and not fear that we let go of any ideology that there is a power out in the universe that is punishing us or judging us or sending down some evil on this planet. And instead we each know that it's just simply the nature of nature writing itself allowing the peace and the power and the beauty and the harmony of the universe to rise up and make itself known. And so, as opposed to seeing this time of one of darkness and scarcity, we choose a new perspective right here and right now and begin to see this as a seed of a new way of living, being germinated and fertilized in the creative soil of life itself. And so today, as we share this experience together, we just simply let go of any attachment to anything whatsoever. 
and open our mind to that which is new to us. Letting it be a reminder to us of the nature of nature, that newness is always ready to be called forth into existence. It's spring. The sun is out. Flowers are blooming. We have a reminder that yes, this effect called the coronavirus and its impact exists and there is renewal and there is opportunity and we still have the ability to use our minds to choose wisely, to act compassionately and to engage lovingly. We let this take root in our consciousness and our soul and with great excitement ready ourselves for what is to come our way in the form of experience or effect or condition or manifestation. We let it be as we affirm together as we say, and so it is. So one of the things that I love so very much about the work that we do at the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles is we have the opportunity to experience such magnificent musicians. We choose the music, often I do, along with our co-music directors, Jeroen Spiewak and Andy Bell, to tailor it to what we're about to experience on a Sunday morning. This morning, we have the one and only James Harper with us, who always brings such a light into our service and our experience. And, James is online waving at us right now. The song that he's singing for us today is one that I've been listening to a lot over the last few weeks, and it has great um, power in my life, and I've even written about it this last week. Many of you may have read it, but I invite James to sing it for us and for us to hear these um, words of the lyrics, and it's what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, James Harper. Good morning, everyone. Don't 
Wash me with brutality Talk to me so you can see Oh, what's going on? What's going on? Tell me what's going on What's going on? Oh, what's going on? James Harper, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give him a clap. A whoo, whoo. Put our hands together and namaste, James Harper. Thank you, James. So wonderful having you here and sharing your time with us. So what's going on, right? What the hell is going on in the world? Because I kept listening to this song over and over. And for those of you that know me, and come to services on Sunday mornings. You know, I love, love, love music. And I will get song in my head and listen to it over and over and analyze the lyrics and listen to the lyrics and play it differently. And this song has been no different. And this morning I was listening to it again, uh, preparing for today. And I asked myself, why does this song have such meaning to me? And I remember that it was this time last that I lost my beloved four-legged spiritual offspring, Sadie. She was literally a piece of my heart. And her passing um, broke my heart on some level. And I listened to the song over and over and over again, not just to being the emotion of grief, not just to um, let the music soothe me during my time of healing, but as a practicing metaphysician to know that what's important for me if I choose to be a conscious evolution, evolutionist, which means to go higher and higher on the vibrational frequency of consciousness in life, that it is incumbent upon me as it is for each one of us to go deeper and deeper into our soul and ask ourselves, what do I believe? Not just what do I believe on how do I engage in life and the everyday affairs in this time of life, meaning do I need to go buy bread and do I need to buy canned tuna and do I stand in the line or not or do I use toilet paper to get all of that stuff, right? Keep myself from going down a hole. Not just those questions of what's going on, but what's going on at the level of consciousness for humanity in the world today? Just recently, I was speaking with someone and the thing that they shared with me said, Mother Nature is pissed. The earth is not going to let humanity take her out. She will right that wrong. And as I was thinking of that, it reminded me once again of the song of, it's a bit potentially that we're living unbalanced. The lyrics say, Mother, Mother, there's too many of you crying. For brother, brother, there's far too many of you dying. Yes, it's talking about the physical death of life, of leaving the body, but it's also speaking of us dying from the perspective of understanding who we are as spiritual beings, of understanding that love is the innate nature of who we are, that we are here as contemplative beings with the opportunity and the ability to think anew at all times to literally awaken ourselves spiritually so that we may become personally self-empowered, not just for the personal self-experience that we're having through that, but so that we can reflect the nature of nature and give that back to the universe. The world and the nature of the nature was designed the way it was, and I'm not saying there's some human that designed it. I'm speaking of the intelligence and the wisdom that is innate within the universe that we live in. And the laws that govern this universe we're here long before you and I showed up, and we'll be here long after we're gone. So then the thing that we get to ask ourselves is, why are we living in war? Marvin Gaye wrote the lyrics and told us that war is not the answer, that love can only conquer hate. And so when we're in any time that feels warlike, or in any time where there is conflict, that it's up to you and I to bring some love in here today. Now, as I said earlier, yes, I'm speaking of love in that human manner, that manner of 
emotional interaction. We all know what that feels like. And to do that even in the Eros way, meaning the romantic aspect of love without that us touching, we got to keep that social distancing going on today right now, or physical distancing, as many says, when we speak of Eros love. But most importantly, we're speaking of the agape love, the love that is transcendent of the human or the eros love. It's the love, once again, as Ernest Holmes defines as the self-givingness of spirit whose desire is to create more of itself out of itself. And the only way it can do it is through me and through you. And that there is no circumstance, no condition, no effect, nothing in the world that can alter that absolute component that exists within me and within you. You know, I've been taking time on a daily basis to get out and walk my current four-legged spiritual offspring, Sweeney, who has energy that is beyond comprehension because she's a puppy. And what I'm seeing before me with my human eyes is this deep connection that I'm speaking of. I'm seeing people use their intelligence and their wisdom in a way to honor each other as they're out and about in nature. Yesterday morning, I was walking down the promenade. It's what I call it, that stretch between Santa Mon on Santa Monica Boulevard between Doheny and Fisher. Promenade where the pathway is. It used to be a bridal path. And there were people everywhere. And they were all namasteing each other and communicating and checking in and the dogs were connecting with each other. And it was really a beautiful expression of exactly in play what I'm talking about we're called to do. People were being respectful and honoring and yet there was this deep sense of compassion that was being exhibited and experienced, unlike something I've seen on that promenade in a while. Most often people have their headphones in or they're not paying attention or they're moving fast or on their mobile device. And yet they had chosen to do something differently, whether that it was out of necessity, whether that was out of a basic survival instinct or whether it was out of choice. It doesn't really matter. The outcome took place and that's what was happening. And then I chose to walk into the commercial aspect of Beverly Hills. It was like a, like a bomb had gone off. There was no one there. The stores were boarded up. And immediately there was a sense of gloom and doom. And what it reminded me of is that we get to choose who and what we are and what we express depending on how we show up, not how we let the environment um, dictate for us who and what we are as a human being immersed in a spiritual experience. But by bringing our spiritual nature to everything that we do in our human experience, and then letting the law of life pre present that back out in the form of effect, if you will, or experience or manifestation, matters not what language we use when we call it that. It's still the same thing. And so I want to remind us today that yes, war is not the answer. Yesterday, when I was looking up um, words for my message to share with you today, I kept clicking on Smart Lookup in my Microsoft Word file on my MacBook. And somehow one of the settings had changed and it wouldn't pull up a definition. And I couldn't really figure out what it was pulling up. And what it kept saying for the word war is change, make or become different. The synonyms are to convert, transform, make, adapt, modify, rebuild, reconstruct, refashion, remake, make over. As I allowed myself to process that information and go deeper, I realized that one of the settings had changed and it wasn't giving me a definition, it was giving me the opportunity to explain. Now, I'm a minister, I'm a practitioner, I'm an awakened science of mind student, as are most of you, if not all of you. On some levels, I believe that was a sign from the G-O-D or the D-O-G saying to me, it's time to look anew. It is time to create a new perspective in regards to what's going on. To ask myself, where in my life has there been war? This past week, there was definitely some war going on an event, an effect that went down that I felt like I had no control over. But yet, as it came my way, advice I was getting that didn't necessarily feel like the right thing to do, not that I didn't heed the advice I was getting. 
I reached out to one of my beloved dear friends and said, I trust you to guide me through the next stages of this experience so that it does not turn into war or combat that we can use the spiritual tools of wisdom and intelligence and intuition to allow the divine to rise up within me as it was rising up with him to guide me through this experience that was transpiring in my life and in so doing turn it from a space of combat into one of exploration to convert this opportunity that had shown up as into light to remake the framework of the experience that was taking place in a way that I got to choose to see that miracle indeed was taking place. As we ended our service last Sunday morning, I read to all of us a, a poem, if you will, that had been written or writing by Walt Whitman in regards to living life as a miracle. And I'm going to read it to you today as a reminder that you and I each are at choice, and it's this. Miracles by Walt Whitman. Why? Who makes much of a miracle? As to me, I know of nothing else but miracles. Whether I walk the streets of Manhattan or dart my sight over the roofs of houses towards the sky, or wade naked, or wade, not wade, naked, or wade with naked feet along the beach just in the edge of the water, or stand under the trees in the woods, or talk by day with anyone I love, or sleep in bed at night with anyone I love, or sit at a table at dinner with the rest, or look at strangers opposite me riding in the car, or watch honeybees busy around the high for noon, or animals feeding in the fields, or birds and the wonderfulness of insects in the air, or the wonderfulness of the sundown, or of the stars shining so quiet and bright, or the exquisite, delicate, thin curve of the new moon in spring. These, with the rest, one and all, are to me the whole referring, yet each distinct and in its place, Every hour of the light and dark is a miracle. Every cube of inch of space is a miracle. Every square yard of the surface of the earth is spread with the same. Every foot of the interior swarms with the same. To me, the sea is a continual miracle. The fishes that swim, the rocks, the motions of the waves, the ships with men in them, what stranger miracles are there? As hard as it may be right now to believe that miracles indeed are unfolding at this time. And in A Course in Miracles, which is a metaphysical practice as well, a miracle is defined as a new perspective. We were taught it in the Bible. We were taught to turn the other cheek. It wasn't so that one too could be slapped. It was so that you could choose to look and see something with a new set of eyes. Today, I invite you to choose to see this journey with a new set of eyes. Not just the human eyes, but the eyes behind the eyes. Those eyes that are the divine eyes that are guiding each of us into a new state of awareness, a new state of being. Maybe it's time in our life that we stop asking ourselves, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? What do I need to do? And stop and ask ourselves, what do I need to be? And if you don't innately know what you're here to be, you're here to be those qualities of the divine that exist within you, which once again are peace, power, beauty, joy, light, life, love, 
and wisdom. I'm sure those that are regular attendees of our Sunday service and our classes are probably tired of hearing me say those every Sunday morning but I invite you to hear them anew today because we are in different times. So let's remember on this journey of life that we're on, that we're not alone. Last Sunday, as we gathered together in our building, once again, appropriately socially distancing, I walked up on a conversation of two of our congregants as they were standing six feet apart. And the conversation was how interesting that over the last few years, there's been great worry and concern that social media and technology would be the things that would drive us as a people apart. And yet, here we are as the dawning of a new day has unfolded, and they're the very things that give us the opportunity to come together. It just goes to show us that there is always change taking place. But the question I have for you and I have for me today is, how are we embracing that change? Are we doing it simply reacting, responding, not from the highest framework? Or are we stopping and choosing to be aware and alert and alive to our mental and spiritual nature, choosing to respond, to engage, to react, to interact from a higher state of mind? One of my great and favorite quotes of all times, which once again, our students and congregates know, is by the great Gary Zukov, who wrote the book, Seed of the Soul. And I've used this quote for years, and I think it stands more true today than ever. And he writes this, choice. Choice is the engine of our evolution. If you choose unconsciously, evolve unconsciously. If you choose consciously, you will evolve consciously. Choosing to evolve consciously is much better than unconsciously and most often far less painful. He goes on to write, trust me, been there, done that. But this last line is the best. When he says the power of choice is the greatest gift given, second only to the gift of life itself. And so today, as you and I take a moment and cherish the gift of life, that we are not only imbued with, but have the great opportunity to express. Let's slow down and ask ourselves, what am I willing to choose today? What perspective am I willing to choose for myself? How can I give not only a new, a state of renewal for myself, but how can I give to others? What good in my life can I share out into the universe in a way that it stays in the flow of circulation so that good begins to propagate more and more? And make it known? It's there. It's simply waiting for our calling upon it, just as is peace, power, beauty, joy, light, life, and love. Once again, in our virtual community, our vision statement supports individuals finding their personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening. Today, I've spoken already to each of us about how we find that personal self-empowerment. But I also want us to take a look at how do we find our spiritual awakening. Recently in our class titled The Nature and the Mystical Nature of Conscious Evolution, we were looking at the concept of spiritual awakening. Spiritual awakening is a greater understanding and acceptance of a spiritual truth that there's only one thing taking place, as I said earlier, this message and this service. The one thing means that if there's only one thing taking place, we are each that one thing and we're interconnected in a way that's transcendent of our physicality. The definition of spiritual awakening that I shared in our class recently was this. Spiritual awakening, then, is an awakening of the dimension of reality beyond the confines of the ego. The ego is our exclusive sense of self. In other words, living from that place of I, not we. Spiritual awakening implies the return of what the Taoists call the original spirit, or what Jung calls the self with an uppercase S. 
And it's this return of spirit that makes us truly human. What that means to me is that it's when we return to the spirit within, the oneness of life, the reason that makes us truly human is because it gives us the opportunity to use our humanity in a way to magnify our divinity, to magnify this oneness that we have, to magnify this understanding that is deep within us that all is well, period. Now, I know when I entered this teaching in the early 1980s and the AIDS crisis had hit, I would hear that on Sunday mornings and think, that's a load of crap. But the minister, Dr. Kennedy Schultz, wasn't saying to us that all is well in the physical plane of action. He's saying all is well in that absolute realm that we all live. That place that is unalterable or unchangeable. That place that is within you and within me that is the infinite nature of spirit. And as we call upon that, we invoke an expression of life whereby the law of life must respond to us and bring forth into the world of experience an experience that reflects that state of mind. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't stuff going on in the world. There is. And yes, we should do our part in the physical realm to make a difference. And it's important for us to do our part at that level where we can make a difference, at that interconnected level. You can do that through meditation or prayer or simply sitting in silence or reaching out to a practitioner or reaching out to a loved one and read a book together or listen to music. But take time on a daily basis to return to In our class, I shared this writing that had been given to me called A Message from Spirit and I'm going to share it with you right now. And I don't think it could be any more appropriate at this time that we're in when you hear the words. The message from spirit in regards to your spiritual awakening is this. Try not to resist the ebb and flow of your awakening. There will be many ups and downs, and these are necessary for your journey to wholeness. Learn to love yourself during the periods of isolation and togetherness equally, as they are both important for your soul's growth. My fellow humans that are expressing your divinity as we navigate this pathway, this journey of finding our personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening, we have before us a calling, a calling to return to our spiritual nature, a calling to use our mind and our heart, our hands and our tongues, our abilities to be creative in a way unlike ever before. I was talking to my dear friend Joe Wallach the other day, who's 96 years old, healthy, happy, wise, engaged in life. He said, Keith, I've never seen anything like this on this planet. We all hear that. Well, my belief then is it's time for us to respond in a way like we never have on this planet. Today is the day to let peace be on earth and to let it begin with me. And I know that the same, that's the same for you as well. Today is the day to let there be love on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be light and beauty and joy and life and wisdom. And let it begin with me. Today, I invite you to do something anew in regards to your spiritual awakening. And then do something new today in regards to empowerment. Ask yourself, where can you give? To a neighbor, to an organization, to a spiritual community, even to yourself with love. But make a choice today. Not sit back and who's come at you like a tidal wave, sit back and anchor yourself in your spiritual nature and raise up and ask yourself, how can you replicate the nature of nature and give that you step into the flow of good? In closing, I'm going to share 
a little writing that I shared last week in regards to choosing a new perspective. And it's this, today, it's a good day for a good day. Each new day is a chance to practice changing your perspective. Practice talking to different people. Practice going to new places, obviously not outside, but maybe practice sifting through your day for the things that feel like you want to feel. Practice finding the best of now. This is how you begin to create your life the way you want it to be. And you can start today. And you can start right now. It's time, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between and beyond. It's time for us to remember who we are. Thank you. And so as we continue the service, Jane Harper has another song for us and then I'll share with you what's going on at CSLLA and how we can all support each other. Ladies and gentlemen, James Harper. Come gather around people wherever you roam and admit that the waters around you have grown and accept that it's soon you'll be drenched to the bone if your time is to you worth saying then you better start swimming or you sink like a stone for the times they are changing come writers and critics prophesize with your pen keep your why the chance won't come again And don't speak too soon For the wheel's still in spin There's no telling Who that it's naming For the loser now Will be later to win For the times they are changing Senators, congressmen, please heed the call. Don't stand in the doorway, don't block up the hall. For he that gets hurt will be he who is stalled. There's a battle outside and it's raging. It'll soon shake your windows and rattle your walls for the times they are changing. Yeah, the times they are changing. Come, mothers and fathers, throughout the land, and don't criticize what you can't understand. Your sons and your daughters are beyond your command. The old road is rapidly aging. Please get out of the new one If you can't lend your hand For the times they are changing And the lion it is strong And the curse it is cast The slow will now later be fast as the present now will later be past the order is rapidly fading and the first one now will later be last i say the first one now will later be last yeah the first one now will later be last for the times they are changing yeah the times they are it's oh, thank you, James. How beautiful. 
Yes, these times, they are changing. Let's all give James some applause and some woot woo. So James and Yaron have um, offered to do service with us and other Sundays as well. So I'm looking forward to that happening. And um, once again, just a huge thank you to he and Yaron as well. Um, looks like we're getting it done. We had a challenging tech rehearsal yesterday, but we got it's it. working. <laughs> it's working, yes. So, all right, everyone. So um, now is the time in our service, as we do every Sunday morning, for the opportunity for conscious giving. Um, as I was listening to a podcast yesterday talking about um, how to stay engaged in the world today in a way that we stay in the flow, and as I spoke about just a moment ago, is that um, we support individuals and people and communities that support us. Yesterday, um, I'm sorry, two days ago, our board of trustees made the decision to, not that we don't always, but to step in advance of this law of circulation and to tithe to two organizations that we know very much need our help right now. And so we tithe to Project Angel Food and to the Los Angeles LGBT Youth Center, because just like us, their services don't stop during this time. And of course, with these changing times, um, times may be changing. So now is our time to give of your good and a, contribute in a way to help support this ministry and this community. Since we're not in person, we're not going to pass the basket around, but we're passing a virtual basket right now. And so your opportunities and ways to give to us are as follows. For, uh, to mail in a check to the office, I just got a text from Susanna in the office that there's checks there right now. I'm greatly appreciative to know that. You can go on our website, csl-la.org, and click on the donate button, or use the app in the App Store, Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles, and that'll take you through our connection via PayPal. If that's uncomfortable for you and you'd like to give Using a credit card, feel free to call me. My phone number is all over our website, as well as I'll give it to you, 310-963-1653, and we can take care of that in the office virtually and quite privately. So I invite you to take a moment to um, either engage in giving or the method or a commitment to do so, and let's close our eyes as we do in the service and envision what we're giving as going out into the world and doing what good does, multiplies itself abundantly. And then returns to us multiplied in that way. As your own sings us through our song, Love is Our Decision. Your own. <laughs> Thank you, your own. I'm going to give you all an update on what's transpiring here at Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles before we close with the meditation. Um, right now, we're moving through this journey, um, just as everyone is, uh, making changes and adjustments, not so much, well, kind of on the fly and kind of not on the fly. Our weekly e-newsletter will go out um, this week as it does. Watch for that with even further information. We're updating our website. <clears throat> excuse me, our ups website with the things that are changing and how you best as a community can be served and we can serve you. Our past services are on YouTube, so you can find those there through our channels, Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles. Our objective of our goal is to have service just like this next week online with maybe some alterations to enhance it um, from a music perspective and maybe um, where I'll be sitting and I won't be um, moving around so much. For those of you that know me, you know sitting stills are a really hard thing for me to do. 
Also to remind you that our practitioners are available if you would like to reach out to them for guidance and support. Their information is also on our website as well as on our app in the App Store. If you're not using our app in the App Store, now is a perfect time to do that. I will show you what it looks like. It, um, it, looks, it looks like this and you go to um, Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles in the App Store and it has uh, spiritual mind treatments on there. It's got past messages, past meditations, archives. You can link to past Sunday services, an opportunity to donate. It's got information about recorded meditations, classes. You can request spiritual mind treatment. It connects you to our Instagram. You can share our app. There's all kinds of stuff you can do that. And Katie Fletcher manages that for us and we're so appreciative of that. I want to also let you know that we're going to begin this Wednesday at noon, a come together, a coffee clutch, a spiritual coffee clutch, if you will, by Zoom using this exact same format. We'll send that information out to everyone, um, both through our website, through the app, as well as through our weekly e-newsletter. If you're not getting the email communications from us and you'd like to do that, you can sign up on our website. That, once again, that's csl-la.org. I also invite you all to like our Facebook page, which is Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles. We are live streaming this service today through that page. And um, we've had a great response, what Rob is texting me. So I think that that's wonderful. We're trying to figure out how to do our last class that we did of the mystical nature of conscious evolution. Please stay tuned for information on that. I'm sure it will be done virtually, as well as I'm tapping into some other resources to be able to provide you with things such as some metaphysical concerts that you can have access to online, as well as I'm sure most of you got the telephone message that we sent out this week. We've set up a new program called Call Em All, where I can reach out to all of you with one message, and it goes out to you via uh, voicemail, or landline as well as we're sending out text. If you'd like to sign up for those and you're not getting those, please send information to the office um, or to me. All communication information is on the website. We're gonna close with meditation today. And then after we close meditation, I'll stay online if anyone would like to ask any questions. Um, we normally do a question and answer format after my message today, but we decided to not make it more cumbersome than it already was or is. I don't know about you guys, but I thought it went pretty good. How about you all? So I'm gonna invite you all, if you'd like to try, turn your cameras on right now to do so. I'm not gonna turn them on for you, but just so you can have a moment of seeing each other, if you'd like to do that. And then we will close in meditation. So down to the left of your screen where it says turn on camera or start video, you can do that. And we'll, in the upper right corner where you see gallery view, you can click on that and we can begin to see each other. Keith, it says that we were unable to do that because you haven't released it. Okay, well, let me release. Oh, I don't know how, I may not know how to do that. No, I don't know that, well, hold on just one second. All right, I'll just go one at a time and ask you to start your video. I just asked, did it, I asked you did it do it. So I may not know how to do that, ladies and gentlemen, so we may have to do that next time. So let's see, hold on just one second. What you did worked. Just then it worked? Yep. It worked for you, Connie? Yes, it did. All right, so I'm gonna ask everybody, hold on just one second. Yeah, it may only allow it one at a time. So, well, no. Nancy, see if you can turn yours on, please. Travis is there and Julie is there. Okay, I'm, I'm, I don't really want some engagement. I just wanna let's do it. Um, all right, I'm going to ask you all not to be, I wasn't trying to be rude. I just have got to figure this out. So let's all prepare to go into meditation as we do this. I'm going to go for everybody that I can.
as we're all just listening to this music. So you begin to breathe in through our nostrils to the count of three. One, two, three, holding. Exhaling one, out through the mouth, two, three. Inhaling again, one, two, Three, holding, and exhale, going deeper. One, two, three. So as we peer into the back of our eyelids, we see the word peace. And the word power. And the word love. And so as we plant the seed in our consciousness of choosing a new and a new perspective right now, We know that what takes root is living anew, just as we heard today. We begin to choose gratitude for the opportunity to live life. choose to know that we are perfect health, perfect wealth, perfect love. We hold our mental state of being. In light. in love. And in gratitude. We see anew today. We engage the use of our mind anew today. And we let love, the self-givingness of spirit, be our guide. And we say thank you to each other, to James, to Yaron, to Travis, to Rob, to me, and to you. Here we grow.
and let it be as we say together. And so it is. You can unmute if you want. So it is.